is one with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we'll start public comment with uh, the uh, five minutes limit. Comment on agenda items only. I'll go ahead and start. Everybody's being bashful. Good morning, gentlemen. Hi. Good morning. All right. So I saw today on the agenda is the discussion of the appointment to the Board of Adjustment. Um, so on the way over, I pulled the Iowa Code 335.11, membership of board. So I want to just read that to you guys. I'm sure you've heard it. But the Board of Adjustment shall consist of five members who are eligible electors as defined in Section 39.3, and who reside within the county, but outside the corporate limits of any city, each to be appointed for a term of five years, expecting that when the board shall first be created, one member shall be appointed for a term of five years, one for a term of four years, one for a term of three years, one for a term of two years, and one for a term of one year. Members shall be removable for cause by the appointing authority upon written charges and after a public hearing. Vacancy shall be filled for the unexpired term of any member whose term becomes vacant. So the big point is the end of that. So the vacancy shall be filled for the unexpired term of any member whose term becomes vacant. So remind me, Nancy Carlson was May, June of this year she resigned? June. June 31st? It's only a 30th. June. June 30th. Yeah. June 30th? Okay. So, I mean, according to the Iowa Code, you should fill someone um, to at least fill that unexpired term. And then when that comes up due for her term, then you could put, you know, either her, whoever picked, I guess I should say, or someone new. So, um, highly ask you guys to follow the Iowa Code. Um, I hear several times you guys follow code, you follow rules. This is an Iowa code, guys. So, um, as you know, I'm running for supervisor, and I'm wanting to follow the code. So, it's it's an easy code to follow. Um, there is, you know, at least one person that's applied. So, if you want to put that person in, you know, also the gender balance needs to be followed as well. Um, right now, there's uh, what is it, three three men and one woman. So, um, we need that to make a good board that can have a, a decent conversation with each other to. You know, run ideas. You need a wide variety of people. As I said, not in the city limits. Um, really ask you to consider that and, and get it filled. So, thank you. Hi, I'm Janet Wilson with the CTR. And our officer training at the Veterinary Medical Association. They recommended when we put together boards or committees or commissions, we pick green light people, yellow light people, and red light people to work together. That means you want a couple of people who are really gung ho, let's get it done, lots of ideas, go, go, go. Some yellow light people who are like, well, um, let's think about that before we do it. Okay, let's do it. And then the red light people are ones that are like, wait a minute, let's research this, let's get all the options. So. I know, Dan, you um, voiced a concern that you wanted more people to look at. You were worried about Nancy being here and coming to these meetings and stuff. Maybe that's a good thing. Um, it, would be, it would be a different opinion rather than go, go, go and sign the wrong thing. A, a lot of the problems we had may have been avoided if we had had a couple of yellow lights along the way to stop and look at things and review things before they got signed and pushed through. So I think it would be a good thing if you, in your opinion, put some yellow or red light people on that committee to discuss things. Laura Wilson from Dysart. Um, when we knew Nancy was 
not coming up again for the Board of Adjustment. I know you guys set up the, um, the accepting applications earlier, so I believe it was open for about six weeks. Um, I think if you reopened it, I don't think you'd get too many people volunteering, so you'd be going out and finding those people. Whereas you already have somebody that has applied, you've interviewed her already. I'm not sure that reopening it as you wanted to last week would get you too many more applicants um, unless you're going out and handpicking them. And if they're not already involved, um, if they're not aware of what's going on in the county, I don't know that they would they would be putting forth as much effort as some people that are staying on top of things or ac actively applying. Um, so I'm not sure that reopening this for further applicants um, would, would bring you the extra applicants you're hoping for. Um, because before you said you hardly ever get applicants for other positions either. I mean, you have some, you have some that fill gender balance. Um, you do need a variety of people and you, you've got multiple people that are, you know, slightly leaning pro-win. Um, I, I know uh, Nikki has been more, you know, reserved with, with taking all the details in, um, making sure everything's in order, but um, it, it wouldn't be, I don't think, a problem for your guys' agenda to have somebody that is more anti-win. As, as you said last week, they still have four people, and three of those you know are leaning more pro-win. So having somebody that's slightly anti-win wouldn't sway your, your agenda, and she would still fill it. And she, I believe getting to know Nancy over the months that we've been here, I didn't know her before at all. We just talked out in the halls and such. I think she's very detail-oriented. I think she would be a great addition to the board. And I think she would do her due diligence to make sure she's looking at all sides and being fair about the decisions that are going on. So um, I hope that you'll consider appointing her without reopening for further applicants. Oh, I thought you were going to speak. Ignore <laughs> it. <laughs> <laughs> You know, Tom. <laughs> I think you knew better on that. Yeah, I think you know. So. Ask him. Surprised he heard his phone. Or did you tell him? Yeah, it did. Basically, I, I was involved, you know, in the 20 years on the school board with a lot of superintendent searches. And it was always my opinion, if you couldn't find somebody in the first group that applied, you weren't going to pick one of those people when you went back out. So, if, you know, I know uh, Nancy's sitting back here. Uh, I'd like to know if you do reopen it, and that's your decision. And first of all, I want to thank Bill for allowing this to opinion if you go back out and reopen it you need to be able to tell uh, Nancy why she's not good enough to be on that board I mean we heard the code she fills everything so that's just my opinion so thank you sir <laughs> Tom they're really excited they thought you were gonna talk I think you know my opinion too, but I just want to reiterate that one thing you would get with Nancy, and she isn't going to like this, there is nobody probably in Pima County or in Iowa that's more detail oriented that would look at every aspect. There is nobody. <laughs> and that's what we want is if you go out and try to find somebody else and you have to about kind of beg them to be on but they're not going to look into things they're not going to care you know and she does care so um, I just want you to know
tell him that I think he couldn't do anything any better than her. And if she leaned one way and we got some of leaning the other way, you know, um, people care in this county. What you probably don't want is somebody that doesn't care. I know you went out and said that maybe somebody that's neutral or in between. Well, on this issue, you're one way or the other. And um, so what you're saying is, we just want wind, and so that's all we're going to get. So, you know, she would look at all details, and you know, and we're not totally anti-wind. Trier has a thing up there for them, and I don't think I'm against that. Um, people maybe have them in their yard. We're not against that, but I just want you to um, look at her. And there's, like I said, there's nobody that would look at the issue better than her, or any issue that comes up. There'll be other issues too, and she would be. There are other issues than wind. <laughs> I guess I just want to say, um, working at the FSA office, Nikki and I probably can both attest to this. Nancy Yushka was one who would come in to certify or uh, buy grain back. She had everything in a line. Some farmers come in, they don't even know where the field is on the map, you know, but um, Nancy was always on top of things. And I would like for her to uh, get that position too. that detail, Nancy. Could you take care of my finances? <laughs> <laughs> I have no trouble. <laughs> It'll be in <an> order. <laughs> my name's David Turner, and um, I didn't know that we were going to talk about Nancy until just a few minutes ago. Um, I have worked with Nancy quite a bit, and she's extremely detail-oriented. And if I wanted somebody to look into my past, or I was afraid of somebody looking into my past, it would be Nancy. No, <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. Uh, I would, if, if she was going to work for somebody and, and, and she's somebody that's going to need to be hired, I'd hire her in an instant. So. What's your name? My name's David Turner. David Turner. Yes. What do you? Where'd you, where'd you work with her? Um, FSA. FSA. And I'm not He's doing this in my official capacity. I work oh, for, FSA too. I work, work for the federal government right now. I'm retiring, so I can talk about politics. Oh, great. <laughs> great. Great. Thank you, Steve. Uh, Algeron Old 30. That's where it lives. Yeah, Algeron Old 30. East or west of Tama, right? You're talking about me? Yes. Yeah. The Red House on the Hill. Okay. Sorry, I have one more question. What is ROW agreements that the engineer will be talking about? I don't know that acronym. I just checked the atomic time is this one. Oh, is this wow. right? No. Closer. Yeah. Okay, that oh, one there ain't right. Don't look at this. I mean, we started meeting last week. Yeah. 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 That's why I keep looking for this. <laughs> yeah. but no, that one ain't right. 1 more question for the compensation board for the treasurer did she have one that's no longer a uh, part of it or has she not had one since she got a, 
uh, took office in January. When she took office um, midterm. She finished. She used the previous treasurer's person, but she doesn't really know this person. And since she was so new, she didn't have time to appoint anybody. So now that she's elected in, then she gets to appoint a person. So she's two years ago was coming to take over. Just a, it's been like. 11 months since yeah, you got yeah, in office, yeah, so I was like, yeah. okay. It was so quick, she yeah. didn't have time to really research and ask somebody last year, so. Okay, I have nine three we'll call the regular meeting for session. Uh, and I have a motion to approve last week's minutes. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. So moved and seconded to approve the minutes. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Ben. Morning. Move my stuff here, Ben. No, that's all right. See that the Toledo Bridge has not been opened, um, so we're still waiting on the paint strikers. They'll come in on this Tuesday, um, and the people with the signs will come in and will notify the, the DOT. Has their signs are the ones um, yeah. that are blocking the exit. So we'll, mm -hmm. once those signs are all moved out of the way, we'll let the DOT know and should be all open Wednesday. But uh, yeah, I was last week. I thought we were gonna have it open, but uh, they didn't have their sign crew, and they wanted the <coughs> paint strippers wanted to have no traffic. Um, yeah. So, um, and then on uh, K Avenue, um, kind of doing the last bit of dirt work, or dirt work um, before they're hoping to start placing some tile this week. So that's good news on that. Um, on the shop, um, the in floor heat is going good now. Um, right now we're just moving on, getting some things moved over. Um, we got a new mechanic that starts today, so we've got three mechanics now going at the shop, and they'll be helping move stuff over, which will be good. But they'll know where stuff's at now, you know, with the new guy. So, um, and then <coughs> V18 and Highway 30. Intersection light, uh, talked about I think last week a little bit. Um, they're looking at getting that took that picked up this week, so I'll be have have lights lights there. So um, it might help prevent collision. Yes, yes, exactly. With <coughs> getting dark earlier, that's mm -hmm. it's weird. I, when it's five o'clock and I'm thinking to start yawning, and I'm like, is it is it nine? No, no it's only five. So. Um, so I got a few few things for you. This I guess I would recommend you sign here. It's the we got some right away. Um, they'll be on 220 Street. It's a box culvert project that will be letting hopefully uh, in March. Um, so this is kind of. Purchase agreement with, with the landowner here um, would be Alan Clark, um, and I just recommend that you sign the, um, the buyer's acknowledgement that uh, that we're they're okay with us purchasing the right away. And we're, 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 we
any uh, it needs motions. somebody to recommend it and <clears throat> somebody no. can we do both at once? We can do both at once if you if you want. Okay. Do you want me to tag it? Yeah. Yeah. Bring it. So this that one's the Alvin Clark um, one on two hundred Clinic, and this should be the north side of the road. Yeah. So you need someone to recommend it and then you know to approve it? Yeah. Yep. I was, just, I was just kind of, um, I typically have done an in-house show and had you guys kind of uh, prove a uh, kind of evaluation of land purchasing and kind of what the, off the assessor's value, there's a, a factor that you can add. But, um, that's okay, now you needed somebody to sign it for recommending it? Yes. So Ben, explain why the county's purchasing the land for right away. Is it so you can just do the construction to upgrade it, or? Yeah. So this, with um, the side slopes and everything, with the twin, two, is it going to be a twin box culvert? It'll be a lot wider, um, and with the um, the head walls, they're about three to one, and so with those head walls, they kind of go into um, they would not. Have enough right away to like pass the ditch space. It would be half past the existing right away, um, so we need to purchase right away. So we're not, you know, putting start putting county stuff on people's private property and stuff. Thank you. Yes. Yep. Yeah, um, thank you, Jeff. Yep. And then out of two.
then you okay. need a, a motion to approve that for us. Are you still making that? No, it's happening right now. And then um, I was just going to talk to you about um, our assistant foreman um, just a little bit because he was, I know in our handbook we have um, that they can take um, the vehicle home. shed there and so I don't know with winter operations if it would be allowable. I know in the county handbook we there's um, policy where or in the handbook it talks about the, the an employee would compensate the county for those mile, miles driven outside the county. I don't know if you'd be opposed to that. Yes. And then it goes on his taxes. Yeah. But if he's going to do that, then it would be considered a fringe benefit, and it will tax him even more. Okay. So that's kind of where we are on that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I guess that's something for him to think about because it will have to be a fringe benefit. Okay. All right. I will. That's if that's if he reimburses us. No, he won't reimburse you. Um, he never Actually, how we have it set up, actually, it, we need to address that because in reality, it'll be a French benefit. Um, it'll go on his taxes. We have to report it. So it would not make any sense for him to pay you because you're going to report it, and he's going he's gonna to pay you, and then he's going to pay taxes on what he paid you. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Do you tell him just move a couple miles closer? And yeah, there you go. <laughs> just so, move up a little bit. Yeah, okay. that, just move for us, no big deal. Yeah, but um, I guess that was my only other thing. Is there any other <coughs> um, any things you've got yeah. going on? I have one question on planes. Okay, yep. There was a uh, charge for the fuel system and then a charge for the box. Fuel system was like twenty seven thousand. Mm -hmm. ARPA funds. That was through the ARPA. ARPA funds. Yeah, it's but are they are they the thing. same thing? Yeah, they're um, it's associated with um, we needed two vendors to um, complete that job. So oh, that's okay. what it's okay. for. Okay. Yeah, that it was wasn't just, just yeah. one vendor, unfortunately, and then we had to pay a little extra yeah. in other places. Yeah, because we just of the, didn't yeah. It was like I thought it was all one thing. No, no. no. Okay. All yeah. right. With, we had to have somebody hook it yeah. up. And then okay. Okay. So that, was, okay. okay. That, that answers it. Yeah. Um, when did the supervisor get their box? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Do you guys have vehicles? <laughs> <laughs> For like county vehicles? I did Hell, I got a lot of vehicles. So no, I don't have any I had to try. Ben, I got another question for you. Yep. The light you were talking about at V18 and 30, yep. the week you were gone, there was discussion that having an overhead light might be more detrimental because people couldn't see headlights. So are you talking about overhead light or like flashing warning lights? I'm talking about like a, beacon, like a destination light. So there's other forms, I think, on East, I think the intersection of E66 and Highway 30, there's just the overhead light that just lights up that intersection okay. it'd just be there's one on the right now on v18 we have one on the <coughs> northeast side it's not connected to any electrical yet and that's where with putting, putting the one on the southwest side that will all be cleaned up because the dot when they took out that south lane um, we didn't have any electrical that hooked up to the northeast light 
The northeast side is the side that's kind of more hard to get through that corner because it dips weird, right? Yeah. Right yeah. Mm -hmm. so, thank you. Yeah. 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 Can I make a comment? Yeah. Last week, I hauled a load of, whole load of cattle yeah. on 30. Yeah. It was doing 65, and I knew that the binding corner was coming. Yeah. When I popped that hill, if somebody had been just starting to pull out, there's no way I could have stopped that load of cattle before I hit it. I just, I just want to make yes. that comment. I, I, I so, would say we've asked to right. see this. They, this right. dude's I, I know you. Too, I know you have, but uh, I, you know when when you you got a full load of cattle yeah, and you're no, doing sixty five. Yeah. You know, semis can't stop either. Yeah, so right. no. why is the state so reluctant? I don't know. It wouldn't yeah. cost that much money. A no. couple of signs no. and some lights and <clears> you know, yeah, good little safe squad. The disappointing part was one of the lower guys I talked to said, yeah, we've got a couple sitting in the lot right here. We just hit up. Very disappointing. Yeah, that's, yeah. Just, that's mm -hmm. ridiculous. And the main guy says that. Yeah, yeah you just yeah. got to keep telling the state about it. I've made a few phone calls myself. So have you guys thought about possibly a couple weeks ago, somebody mentioned if it came from the supervisors in addition to the engineer, it might hold a little more weight that there's a lot more concern going on. Have you guys considered writing something to the state? I think it'd be great if the chairman did it and then just put his name on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that might, might help. I don't know. It, it might help. Well, and then, might like someone better. else said, at least you can show you've been doing everything as supervisors that you can, and it, yeah. Yeah. nobody could call you out for not taking extra steps. I think that'd be, yeah. and that's, I, that'd be something I'd support. Right yeah. That's why I made the comment, too. I, I think they meant Laura. Sorry. It was yeah. good. Yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. I just want to say to myself, you know, okay. can I stop? There's no way I could have stopped. Yeah. yeah. That's so. right. Okay. All right. Thanks, One man. of those heavy, you, you know, heavy traffic turning. Okay, mate. Nothing? Ben, you have a great week. You too, Kurt. All right. And Bill. Yep. Hey, have a great week. <laughs> Thank who's, you. Who's the assistant Taylor County engineer? Uh, sorry, I said it's, this that was just four foreman. foreman. Um, Nick Coffin. Coffin? Kaufman. Coffman. Coffman. Yeah. Hopefully, I'm saying that. No right. help yeah. with or no assistant <laughs> engineer yet. Uh, no. So I haven't gotten any other. Yeah. Maybe if you interview somebody for some Hawkeye stuff next time, and they might like you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> maybe. maybe. <laughs> The real good engineers come from Ames. So, <laughs> yeah, so, so. What are you laughing about? <laughs> All right, you have a good week. Right, See ya. You too. Goodbye. <sighs> okay, claims. I have a motion to approve the claims. I'll make a motion to approve the claims this week. They're three hundred thirty-seven thousand three hundred seventy-four dollars and seventeen cents. No, 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 I'll second. <laughs> okay. It's been moved and seconded to approve the claims. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Do we have to do it? Yeah, let's do it. Big time. Yeah, we really have to do it. Hmm. Okay, next one. Uh, Agenda. Discuss uh, board of adjustment. Um, I believe uh, what we're going to do today, if we get the motion in the second, are to approve appointing Nancy to the board. I'll make that motion. I'll second. Okay. It's been moved and seconded to approve Nancy Houston to the Board of Adjustment. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Nancy, you are officially on the Board of Adjustment. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Laura, do we need to call uh, Amanda to have her? No, um, she asked me just to present it for you. Okay. That's okay. Um, yep, that's fine. So Amanda uh, Kriegel is the new treasurer. She was voted in a little over a year ago. And each elected official gets to appoint somebody to represent them on the compensation board that sets their wages or makes a recommendation for their wages. And since she, she was fully embroiled in learning her job last year, she did not appoint anybody. She went with the person that was there for the previous treasurer, which was um, Lisa Hoy. Now that she's kind of got her footing, she's done some visiting with people and uh, she and Lisa don't know each other real well, so um, she uh, approached me and said that she had asked Marty Harden from Tama, he's a businessman, to represent her on the compensation board, so she would like you guys to appoint him as her representative. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I know Marty, he'd be, he'd be a good one for that. Yep, and he would serve until her term is up, and if she gets reelected, she can reappoint him or appoint someone else. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And he has agreed to do it. I'll make that motion. I'll second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to approve Marty Harden to the compensation board for the treasurer. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. So where does the compensation board still meet in December? I thought they yeah, did last usually year. late November, December. So now that we've got him on there, I'll be getting that set up. Okay. okay. I believe that's all.
I'm just glad we can close this one.